The goal of this screencast is to give a high-level explanation of NP-completeness. NP-completeness is one of the most important concepts in complexity theory. But first I want to review some few concepts. So remember, uh, the class P is a class of decision problems that are solvable in polynomial time. Where what that means is that the number of instructions is basically a polynomial in the problem's input size. There are many problems in P, some of which you've certainly seen before if you've taken an algorithms course. Searching, uh, element uniqueness in a large collection of items, uh, graph connectivity, whether graphs are acyclic, and finally, in primality testing. Also, optimization problems that are typically covered in an algorithms course. For example, minimum spanning tree, shortest pass, etc. Also, remember what we mean by NP. The characterization of NP is that they're decision problems whose proposed solutions can be verified in polynomial time. They may or may not be able to be solved in polynomial time, but they can be ver verified. What this means practically is that given a problem instance and some certificate or proposed solution to the problem, there's a function that returns yes or no in polynomial time, indicating whether or not the certificate is an actual solution to the problem. There are a number of ways, to, different ways to think about this. One is that uh, a non-deterministic polynomial time algorithm is an abstract two-stage procedure where you generate it generates a random string purported to solve the problem and then it checks it in, in polynomial time. Other ways of looking at this are covered in a formal language course normally and typically involve non-deterministic finite automata. So what problems are in NP? Again, all the problems that are in P are also in NP. Also, the Hamiltonian circuit existence problem. Does there exist a Hamiltonian circuit for a graph? That is, does there exist a cycle that visits every vertex in the graph exactly once? Another NP problem is the partition problem. Is it possible to partition a set of n integers into two disjoint subsets with the same sum? This is related to the knapsack problem. Um, Decision versions of traveling salesperson, knapsack, graph coloring, etc. So there's a whole range of problems, some involving graphs, some involving numbers, that are in NP. A big breakthrough in our understanding of complexity occurred in the early 1970s with Cook's theorem and independently by another computer scientist, Levin, and that is they showed that there are problems that are NP-complete. NP-complete means that a problem is as hard as any problem in NP. So what does that operationally mean? It means that the, this D is in NP and that every problem in NP is polynomial reducible to D. This is pretty amazing if you think about it. There are thousands of problems in NP and to have one problem it basically, every one of those problems can be reduced to is pretty incredible. And that because that, what does that mean? That means that if you know how to solve that one problem in polynomial time, then you would be able to solve all the other problems in NP in problem, polynomial time. This would answer the question, is P equal to NP? If you could prove that an NP-complete problem can be solved in polynomial time, then indeed, P is equal to NP. So how did how was this proven? Um, there's a problem called CNF satisfiability, which you may have run across. Basically what it is, is are there values for Boolean variables that will satisfy a given Boolean expression that has a certain form? And that form is just a set of clauses which are connected by ands. So each clause is a, a set of Boolean variables connected by ORs, and then we've got an AND, and then another clause, etc. So for this whole expression to be true, each one of these clauses must be true. Now, if you stop and think about it, this is clearly in NP, because we can. what would a certificate be? A certificate would just be a set of values 
for the Boolean variables? And how would we check whether that would satisfy the expression? We just plug in the values. And so the checking phase would obviously be linear in the length of the expression. In addition to satisfiable general CNF satisfiability problem being an NP complete problem, there's something called 3SAT, which is also NP complete. And in 3SAT, each of these expressions can be at most length 3. The reason we'd like to restrict ourselves to 3SAT is it's just a lot easier to think about if you're able to keep the individual clauses from getting too long. Now, once you have an NP complete problem, now remember what that means. Here's your NP complete problem. All the other problems in NP can be reduced to it. So if you have a solver for this, you can solve all the other problems. But wait a minute. Suppose we have another problem over here and we want to show that it's NP complete. How do we do that? We reduce the NP complete problem to this problem. What does that mean? That means if I have a solver for this, I've got a solver for the NP complete problem, and that means I have a solver for any problem in NP. And it turns out that there are hundreds of problems that are NP complete. Traveling salesperson problem, the decision version, decision version of knapsack, partition problem, graph coloring problem, hundreds of other problems. And what's interesting and important about this is these problems are all of different types. Some have to do with numbers, some have to do with graphs, some have to do with matching things, tons of different kinds of problems, and here they are all the same level of difficulty in the same sense. Namely, in the sense that, that for right now, we don't know if there are polynomial time uh, algorithms that solve them, and also we know that, in some sense, they're all the same problem in terms of level of difficulty. So here's our current situation. Uh, we have NP problems, we have P problems, and we have NP complete problems. And those sets are disjoint, obviously, um, because these are problems for which we do not have polynomial time solutions. And the way we've gotten this wide range of NP complete problems is to do problem reductions. So circuit satisfiability, um, which I haven't talked about, but that's a basically links all the decision problems to this thing called circuit satisfiability, which basically comes down to an algorithm um, that will solve the problem. And then we go from that, we go to satisfiability, and then to 3SAT. <clears throat> and from there, we're able to reduce 3SAT to all sorts of different problems, subset sum problem, clique problems, vertex cover problem, Hamilton cycle problems, traveling salesperson problem, tons and tons of other types of problems. So just to summarize where we stand, um, if a polynomial time algorithm for just one NP complete problem is discovered, then every problem in NP can be solved in polynomial time, and that is P equals NP. But not every problem in NP is NP complete. There are NP intermediate problems, like factoring and graph isomorphism. Those problems are sort of on the boundary. Um, they're in NP. They're not poly we don't have polynomial time algorithms, but they're not NP complete. Also, there are NP hard problems. Those are the problems that are not in NP, but at least is hard. So an example of that is traveling salesperson problem. Suppose that P is not equal to NP then it's been shown that there will exist problems in NP that are not in either P or NP complete. Please keep in mind that this has just been an introduction to some of the major issues related to the P versus NP problem. There's lots more good information on the P versus NP problem, both on the internet and in the many textbooks on algorithms and formal languages.